Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. It's pouring rain, and I'm about to head down to Alabama to get the charger detailed. We're gonna walk you through how we restore this old paint job and getting it looking really good. So we're pretty excited about that. I mean, we paid about 3,500 bucks back in 2008 to have the charger painted, and uh, it could use a little bit of love. I was in my 20s when I got this charger. It wasn't perfect. So it needs some TLC, but it's good enough. We're gonna get going. Time to head out on the road. All right, so why am I dragging the charger in the rain covered in leaves and road grime? down to Alabama. Well, as promised in another video that was recorded a couple months ago as of this recording, we're meeting up with Rob Colonino at Detail Rescue, and we're gonna do a really neat restoration of the paint job on the charger. It looks good from about 10, 15, 20 feet away. You get up close, there's a lot of roughness to it, a lot of swirls, a lot of scratches, a lot of belt buckle scratches, just a lot of tools being dropped on it. Because we work on it, we race it, we drive it. So the charger is getting the full, the full Monty. Um, the problem is, of course, is that I was not expecting it to rain like it has, and the car is totally, totally filthy. So basically, we're making Rob really work for his time. Uh, we're gonna push his talents to the, push his talents to the extreme. All right, so we made it to Rob's. <laughs> car is filthy. Rob, say hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm on Facebook, Detail Rescue. Just look up Detail Rescue and you'll find me. Detail Rescue 911 at gmail.com. Go inside for a second and okay. we'll go over kind of the plan. And I'm going to show you what Rob's got hiding in his garage here. <laughs> this is an absolutely gorgeous 1970 Roadrunner 383 four speed car in Citron Mist Metallic. That color is one of the f really rarest colors that I've seen in person. And I was just talking to Rob about it. You know, people just go, oh, it's gold. No, it's not gold. And I'm telling you guys, when this thing hits the sunshine, it absolutely explodes. It is one of the prettiest colors and just one of the most overlooked colors. People are like, oh, I like purple or I like orange. I'm telling you, man, some of the metallics that came out of Chrysler are just knock your socks off impressive now i've seen this car actually before rob even got it this used to belong to mopar connections tech editor mike wilkins he got it as a project in a box eight years ago seven years ago and uh, got it done got it together it was a little too rowdy for mike's taste but it's perfect for Rob. That's it. Love it. <laughs> Keep it clean. Runs great. Oh, it's awesome. My oldest son can't wait to get his hands on it. No, well, he's not getting it for a long time. Not for a while. All right. And I got to say, perfect choice on the year 170 rallies. Super, super cool. You know, they looked, they, you know, they had that good stock 70 look, but they just, with the Nitto tire on it, Got to give it to you, Rob. Thank you. It's a, That's a pretty girl. It was, it was a natural choice. Yeah, man. This is a general overview. This oh, is look at you. So here's the stuff we're going to do. Very okay. cool. Of course, we're going to talk about how how much you want it corrected. And you know, we'll, we'll go over what's, what's scratched and what's swirled and all that stuff. Of course, we inspect it. Nicks, dents, anything. And this is from a, the detailer's point of view. Because you don't want to get caught. Hey, this, this scratch wasn't here. This piece was cracked up before. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. So you document everything. Uh, we'll wash it. We'll do the foam wash out there. We'll, and part of, part of the wash is tires and wheels. We'll get it uh, dried off, get all the water out of the nicks and crannies. We'll bring it, we're going to bring it inside. We'll do the mechanical decon, paint, uh, glass, bumpers. Uh, start the correction probably a just car medium with a rupes yellow pads and i'm thinking on this one but we'll we'll give it a couple test spots uh after the whole thing is paint corrected we'll do a surface prep which is an isopropyl alcohol mix and we'll do the whole car twice 
get, oh, wow. to get every uh, nook and cranny, all the po old polish or compound off. Okay. And then we'll apply a ceramic coating. We're going to do an Onyx uh, three-year ceramic coating on this. Holy cow. And uh, we'll get that done. And then, of course, the last thing is check for high spots uh, on the coating uh, before you kick it out the door. Of course, we're going to polish paint and glass, uh, polish the glass, check all the chrome and trim, make sure everything is nice and sparkly. Again, this is a general overview. A lot of these steps have multiple steps in there. Okay. So you're just seeing the, the like I said, a big overview of it. The main thing we want to do is decon the paint polish the paint and do the ceramic coat. I do a lot of stuff from my car clubs. Okay. And the biggest thing is like, we never knew about that. Okay. We didn't know there was four different types of mi microfiber and you should use this for this and this for this. There's a lot of stuff that can help keep your, your vehicle clean and put as uh, least amount of scratches and swirls in it as possible. Because every time you touch that car with something, you're going to you're gonna put a little scratch in it. Oh. A, little, a little swirl in it. Okay. So you, so you don't want to do that. All right. You want to get that stuff out there because when you start to polish, you don't want that dirt coming out, getting in your pad, and then scratching up the paint. Oh, sure. That's why you want to get all this stuff out now. All right, Rob, what are you putting on? Okay, put these in the all four corners. So uh, your hoses, your pressure washer hose, your hose, your electrical cords don't get caught up in the, in the tires. They roll right off. What's a lot, this? A lot of people don't, uh, they say, okay, start at the top of the car. Okay. I always start with the wheels and tires first. Okay. And engine bay if I'm doing that. Okay. Because they are super dirty. Now these aren't that bad. But all you right. get a car with spokes or uh, something where the disc brake is really exposed, you get all that dust. When you're doing wheels and tires, that stuff's gonna come out and get everywhere. So sure. I wash the car, all right. then do the wheels and tires, only to have all that stuff get back on the car, then you have to wash it again. So right. wheels and tires first. Get the dirtiest stuff if first. If you're doing under the hood, do that next, and then start on the car. Okay. So we're just gonna go right, right here. This is a all, uh, all wheel and tire cleaner by Wolfgang. Okay. We're gonna, I put it on a wet wheel. And it's okay on aluminum wheels like this? Yep. It's not gonna? Nope, it's, all right. it's an all wheel cleaner. Great. I use a little bit of rougher brush for the rubber and then we'll go to a softer one for the wheel. Okay. So it's really soft. So oh, that's a not, soft, okay. Yeah, so it's not gonna harm the, uh, the wheel. All right. You don't want to put any scratches in it. And of course you want to get the little stuff too. Alright, yeah, that that's counts. and you're just dipping it into some soapy water. Yeah, that's just that stuff with some uh, McGuire's uh, gold class soap in it. It's okay. Like... Pretty off the shelf stuff, nothing too yep. crazy. Yeah. Okay. I left all the burnout rubber <laughs> on there. Okay. So this is not a baby car, sadly. <laughs> and yeah, the tire fitment's a little tight in there. Yep, it is, that's you know. for sure. These are actually pretty clean. Like I said, if they were really dirty, you see all the brown stuff coming oh, out. Oh yeah. Nice soft brush again. some bug and tar remover oh because this is the heavy series the only place i'm going to put this on right okay now. So let's sit a little bit and i said always read the directions first okay i could be wearing gloves right now but since we're washing it not too bad okay i put it on a wet surface uh, i don't let it dry uh, let it sit on there i'll wipe it off and then i'm gonna have to do a second application i do have plastic razor blades too that we can use before okay the, before the polishing process We'll see how we'll let it we'll see how it takes. All right, yeah. we're putting the McGuire's to the test here. All right, that's your bug sponge. Yep, it's a textured sponge. sponge. Yep. Okay. Now you see it's a lot of stuff is coming off. Okay, so it's working. It's working. You might take another coat. I'm going to take this plastic yep. razor blade. All right. And just kind of look at that. It's 
coming right up. Okay. See that? Gently, yep. Yeah. You You're not putting any pressure on no, it. You're just no. gliding it across. That's it. Okay. Like you're shaving. Yep. Like I said, this area might need a little more. But, okay. But we can also get that inside. Okay. Uh, this is a little too much gunk for a clay bar. Okay. You oh, want, yeah. You want to see, look, That's quite a bit. Yeah. So you want to have all the stuff off. A lot of products I use are off the shelf stuff. And I like to teach uh, or show the guys like in my club because they're going to go to Walmart or AutoZone or something like that. They're not going to go to Auto Geek Online or sure. Autopia. So products that they can use off the shelf that work and are safe for the surface. That's, okay. that's what you want to use. And like I said, this stuff's good. It works well. Sometimes when you when you clean something off, you reveal the true surface of the, okay. of the thing. So like some of this stuff here, you didn't really see that before. Oh, the stains. The stains. Now okay. that we cleaned it and some of the the uh, the gunk is off. Now okay. now the the true the true nature of the surface comes to light. Okay. So we'll, so we'll see what we can do with that. But like I said we're concentrating on the paint, but we'll see sure. how we can get these polished up and see how they look. Washer. Okay. Low, this PSI is only like uh, 22,000 on this one, but the gallons per minute you want over 1.6 gallons per minute. You don't want too much pressure. Um, but like I said, uh, and you can see when I, you know, I put it on, you hear it. And when I lift the trigger off, right. the motor stops. Okay. Because you know how annoying it is. Just going, going, going. Going, and especially the gas ones. No. So. This is only about 160 bucks on Amazon. It doesn't come with this. It okay. It comes with the, the regular longer one. Right. So I upgraded to this. Um, I had an extra hose, so instead of 20 feet, it's 40 feet. But like I said, this is, it's a cheap investment. There are more pricier ones. I've had this one for two years. I've been using the heck out of it for two years. So it's good to go. This one's a Tool Daily Foam Cannon. Okay. Uh, basically, you hook it up to the gun. This one is, it's a black fire regular car wash, but the Meguiar's gold wash, like you see in all the stores, yeah, great. Really? It works really great. Four to six ounces. The, you might have to put a little more soap in it. Sure. But it's worth the. These suds aren't the thickest, but you know, the, it's taking the stuff. And you can see it's pulling the dirt off. Yeah, it works. Like I said, it'll get, it'll get some of the grime off, get some of the stuff off. You don't want to let it dry, of course. Now, anytime you change a nozzle, uh huh. Always check it away from the car. And one thing about the pressure uh, washer too, you don't want to do this. This will peel that thing off. So right. you want to, just enough to coat the car with water and, and get the dirt. There are some uh, detailing soaps out there that are designed to do that. I have one, it's called Car Pro Reset, where you want to take the wax off the car. Okay, that That's was what I was asking yeah, in regards so to dish soap. Yeah, so there are things out there that'll do that. But in a safe manner. Okay. Yeah, don't want any. Another thing, like, well, we'll go. Windex, I don't use Windex either. Windex All right. has ammonia in it. All right. This, this is called a two bucket wash. So one, one bucket is for soap, and one bucket is for rinse. Now, inside these buckets, I have a grit guard. Okay. Okay, grit guard. So what you do is you, you, you use the, uh, you wash the car, you rinse it, and then you rub your your, your uh, mitt on the grit guard to get any stuff that's, you know, in there out. Okay. And what the grit guard is suspended off the bottom of the bucket. So right. Any stuff that comes down there settles below it. Okay. And doesn't get back in your in your media. Now your car is pretty clean. Oh. Uh, so you're not gonna, you know. I try to get it as dirty as humanly possible, dragging it down here two hours in the rain. So I'll take, <laughs> uh, I'll take the thing, uh, squeeze it, and since it's not very dirty, I'm gonna do one pass. Okay. Just like this. One pass. You're not Back scrubbing on it. Scrubbing. You're... Nope. I'm doing one pass like this. Doing a mechanical wash on it because, like I said, it's not that bad. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. Now, one good thing about today being cloudy yeah. is the soap is not drying on that. Oh, good. And it's not so it's not hot. It's not there's no there's no rush right now. So now I uh, I rinse. I get a little scrub. 
squeeze it out. Put, put it back, back in, in your soap. All right. You don't use high pressure air? No, this is good. Really? Okay. You see those guys who use air compressor and blow the snot out of their well, cars. You can do, I mean, people do that, but what you can do is rip seals. You can yeah. rip door seals, you can do all that. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So yeah. This, no. is a, this is a pet dryer. <laughs> now they make uh, the detailing version of this. Sure. That's about four times as much. And it's hundred bucks on, um, on Amazon. That, know, okay. So, I mean, I'm not cheap, but right. I can buy three of them. I've had this for a year and a half. It worked great. I love it. Before you clay to determine if the vehicle needs to be clayed. So you take a like a sandwich bag like this and gently rub it on the surface. And I can tell it feels like sandpaper almost, a very fine sandpaper. Now over here I've already clayed it. And it's smooth. Okay. So you, I mean you can tell that all those tiny bits of uh, contaminants on the paint are now off on this side. And you can tell earlier when I pulled the, the clay off, like when I was doing the roof. You can see the dirt on there. That's the stuff that's just extracting, extracting. all that out of the yep. porosity of the paint. So when we do the polish, you don't have to polish those contaminants off. They're already gone. Okay. And it polishes it a lot faster. So we're starting to clay the car. This is a, uh, a poly clay. It's a traditional clay. Uh, now we already washed it. We washed it pretty well. But you can see the stuff that's still coming out of the paint. Wow, and that's just one pass. This, yeah, that's just a couple passes with the with the clay bar. Okay, so we just have a lot of dirt that's just impregnated in the paint. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that we got to clay the whole car we're then. Huh? The whole, we're gonna clay the, obviously we're gonna clay everything. Oh the yeah. Whole car, uh, windows, chrome, and whole, whole thing. So you take this, you clay it, and then when you're time to move to a new spot, you just crumple it up like this, twist it, roll into a little ball. And then you have a fresh piece of clay. Now, if you drop this on the ground, you throw it away. Throw it away. But if you have a synthetic clay, let me, let me grab one real quick. Here's a synthetic clay. All right. All right. And it's just be, almost like a neoprene on a sponge backing. Does the same thing. Uh, this was a little finer. Okay. Um, but uh, I can use these two. And you can use these also when you're washing the car. They oh. Make, they make these out of mitts. Okay. So this is, but I like to use this. Uh, okay. It's a finer, it's safe real safe and I'm gonna make sure take care of this paint you know okay no scratches but we're gonna use this on the glass You're going to be surprised. You're going to see a big difference when I do the windshield, and okay. then after I polish the windshield, you're going to I, you're like I, I can see now. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to, you're going to notice the, you'll notice the difference. Okay. That, the, that you don't even know the stuff's on there, but it's on there. Right. But, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And you're using the same clay bar and the same, same material and everything. Same clay bar. Yep. Matter of okay. fact, I've used the same clay bar on this whole car right now. I just keep twisting it like you're supposed to do. I roll into a little ball and then I make a little patty of it. And then when you when you use a clay bar, I use it in the palm of my hand and I let my fingers uh, go over the edge because you don't want to do this because what you're going to do is you're going to have your fingers in here 
and I'll, I'll give you an example. If you put your fingers on it, this is what you get. Okay. And then you're going to poke three holes in there. But if you put a palm on it, you get a lot more use out of the same out of the same thing. And now, gotcha. And now it's a nice flat. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that. Hear smooth. Stuff to see their glasses either pitted a little bit or there's some kind of contaminant on it. We're gonna try to. Yeah. Seems like some of it's coming off though. So this is the first time it's probably ever been really, really gone through. Probably in its life. Yeah, this is coming up. Some of it's coming up slowly. But I mean, there's still some pitting in there. That's 53 year old glass, so. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see. And now, see, it's there, but yeah, some of it's pitted. Yeah. But some of it came off. I will uh, have to take a closer look at it. So you're using the same clay bar material, synthetic, but, yeah, synthetic you're, but you're clay. using a synthetic clay bar pad. Yeah. Now, one thing, if you're going to use synthetic clay uh, when it's brand new, do the glass first to kind of break it in before okay. you do it on the paint. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's recommended, like I said, do it on the glass first. And then the paint. And you're saying that the synthetic pads are typically a little finer? No, no, they're just they're just easier to use. Like I can drop this on the ground right now, oh. spray it off, wipe it, and I'm back. If I use that with a regular clay, if I drop it on the ground, it's gone. You throw it away. Okay. So it can be a money saver too. All right. You know? Interesting. A couple bucks and save some bucks, but yeah, take some of this stuff off, and then we're gonna polish the glass later. And you can feel it when I first put the, this on here. It was a little draggy, and okay. then the more you do it, the smoother it gets. So now okay. you know that the contaminants are coming off. All right, we're going we're to take some uh, measurements of the paint to see. Uh, how thick it is in uh, different spots on the car. Let's see what we get so far. 8.4 mils. Okay, and what's desired? Uh, to, for correct, now you'll get a new car, brand new car, it'll have two or three mils on it. That's it? That's a brand new car. Two, wow. Two or three mils. So this is really good, it's good, it's good correction uh, candidate. 8.6 is pretty consistent. Let's go to the front panel here. Oh, 15. 15 on there. Wow, we're swimming in it. Now, could be, I don't think there's filler in there. Let's okay. check the roof. I'm pretty sure there's lots of filler in this car. Because no. <laughs> I'm the guy you put 5. it on. 5.6, so that's a little less, but still plenty for a correction. Okay. Let's go to the trunk. 23. So, let me do this one again. 21, so there could be some filler in here. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, That's a big see, flat pan yeah, you panel. you can see some sanding marks. Right. So, uh, and the way you can really check them is check the door sills. Okay. So, so this is because this will have the least amount of paint uh, normally at all. So I'll check the door sill. Uh, let's see if I can get it. 3.1. Okay. So that's the normal thing you're going to find on a new car on the on the exterior is three two it's, to three yeah three three is about you know what they're putting on it now okay that seems really thin to me well what they're doing is uh saving money on clear coat okay so let's just say you can save a quart of clear coat on every car yeah times a million cars <laughs> true they save a lot of money that way okay. and it's all robotic stuff now but no humans aren't doing it anymore. right it's all exact so they're just passing the buck on to the detailer guy who has to correct it later and then can't really get a deep correction because there's not enough clear coat. So the pad's white. You're right. Doing the black stripe, you can see some of the some of the color coming off. Okay. But we'll see. This is a very gentle pad with a gentle polish. So you always start slow, so to speak, and you don't want to put the harshest stuff on there first. We'll, we'll see how it did. Okay. 
still still a lot of swirls in there. Oh yeah. Yep. So we have to go with the. Although it took the cloudiness off. Yes. See that? Oh yeah, big difference in the cloudiness. I mean, yes. you get some clarity. Yep. Yeah, the cloudiness came off, but the the, the swirls and scratch. So we will have to go a little uh, a little okay. more aggressive. This is the polish we're going to use on the on the car. Okay. And this is the pad we're going to use on the car. Uh, except you know, bigger pad. And if I can dial that in, we can just do the whole thing at once. Grab it. Some of the stuff here. Yeah, it took it. It took definitely took it off. Oh, took yeah. some of it off. It's there's still some on there. These are uh, little deeper scratches. Sure. But a lot of the swirls are gone. So so there's the old one. Yeah. And there's after eight passes yeah still, we're, we can still, we're looking at the clarity of the actual light yes yeah yeah so it's definitely and over, oh yeah look at that yeah, yeah you can't even see the 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 rings of the light not at all but here you can start to break them out uh -huh. it still needs work like i said we'll, we'll that was eight passes i don't want to go too much into the stripe right you know i don't want to i don't know how thick the stripe is but yeah well but we'll get it like i said well it's already looking a lot better than it than it did oh yeah yeah a big difference yeah there's a big difference there okay so this is a free spinning orbital so when it rotates it rotates this way but then in the brick circle there's little circles inside it like so this is a free spinning i can sit here and hold this right and uh yeah, i can sit here all day and hold this it really won't do a lot of damage later when we go to doing the paint i'll show you what a gear driven uh polisher does where you can't hold on to this okay or else you'll take your hand off so here's a gear driven one. Same thing, it turns, but it's not free spinning. No. I, I can't hold on to that. Okay. I can't sit there and stop the pad like okay. I did the other one. Uh, and this, so this is this is gonna make the same big circle. Instead of little circles, it makes little arcs. Okay. But it's you put it down, it's gonna turn. It's gonna take paint off. All right. Or take, you know, take material off. Sure. Rather than the, my free spinning when I can sit there and stop it and if I don't get the right angle, it stops spinning. But this one will will keep torquing. Right. So we're gonna use this for the and uh, we'll start on the trunk and we'll see how it goes. We'll start with the cordless. I do have a corded version. But since we're here, uh, we'll out the pad first. So we're going to start on this side. I'm going to lay down a couple things here. Take it on a number one, so it's the least amount of, uh, of power right now. Spread the product out. And pick it up a little bit. All right, so that was eight passes. About eight passes. With the big gun. With the big gun and uh, orange pad. So I can tell just by looking in the light here. Yeah. That it's, so we have what we did before. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna go to, but we didn't do it all. We didn't touch right, right there. Here. Yeah. We didn't touch it all. Super hazy. Oh my goodness. So. Like I said, there's still some random scratches in there, but... Still, it took you know, so much out. Yes, it took a lot out. I mean, this looks brand new. So, it's... Yeah, that is super clear. Compared to that. Yeah, that is just... Yeah, look at the ring on that light. Yeah, so... The, okay. The, that's definitely that's definitely a change. That's what, yeah. that's what we're looking for. Okay, yeah. look at the pad, though. Yeah, here's so... so <laughs> the pad is taking some... It's taking, the you know, some of the color out. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think we're burning the pad no, at all. No, it's... no, this is not. And one thing, you, when I put the product on there, you see, you can still see the product working slightly wet. Okay. You don't want to use a dry pad. You oh, okay. Want, you don't want to let that stuff dry out. And the stuff I'm using, it's a Jess Car Medium Polish. It stays, uh, stays wet so you can work it for a longer period of time. Some okay. compounds don't do that. Some compounds dry faster, but I found that 
this, it's a good compound. At least it lets me, you know, have a lot of work time and, and do my thing. But yeah, that 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 looks a lot better. Yeah, and, it does. You're not going to use that pad for the rest of the trunk. You no, would I'm rotate gonna, that out. I'm going to rotate it out. Here. Okay. But this, I mean, these clean off pretty good. And you see, do you see the halo around the? You can almost see a halo around the light. Oh yeah. Those are swirls. The straight lines are scratches. So let's go over here. Now you can still see some scratches, but this, but the, the halo effect is kind of gone. So right. the swirls are gone. So swirls are lighter, scratches are deeper. Gotcha. Yeah. So, like I said, if we were going for perfect paint, we would do this again and again and again and again. You know, <laughs> All right. You know, it's, it's, it's it gone, but, but yeah. So what we got? Like I said, you can still see some deeper scratches here. Yeah. Now, in regards to the actual machine itself, yeah. um, do you have preferred RPMs for different paint or for different surfaces? Well, or you use one. I don't. I don't. I, I forgot the RPMs for each setting. But right. uh, one to start off to spread the product around. Okay. And then I usually use nothing less than four. Okay. And that sometimes I max it out. All right. Yeah. As long as you uh, put the right pressure down. You know, when you're when you're using it, you uh -huh. can you can use a heavy setting and, and and know what you're doing. Now, how much pressure do you typically apply? Five to ten pounds, maybe. Okay. Or you know, sometimes just two fingers. I, oh. I I'll use this. I use my left hand to guide it around. Right. And use the weight of the machine to 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 keep it down. Every paint is different. Gotcha. You know, every paint is different. Like I said, once we get, you know, and we measured this paint before. Right. Remember when we were at your house before? Right. So it was. 11 mils in some areas so the the clear coat is there and we did find some bondo stuff you know remember it was really, right wouldn't read or it was really thick but uh so we'll be we'll be up up in the power up a little bit and, and and knocking this out and like i said getting it done but it's that looks that looks a ton better oh know. yeah yeah again you just see all the cloudiness the the hazing and the clarity here I mean, I'm just looking at your overhead lights and you can see just how sharp that yes. reflection is versus just the absolute haze of the light here. Yeah. So we're... Yeah, not bad for vinyl. Oh yeah, especially a cheap one. Yeah, not you bad know. for vinyl. Like a two foot or three foot by three foot square every two time. by twos two okay. by, you know this i'm so what i'm doing for this one i'm doing a little longer reach on this side so okay. i don't have to do much of a longer reach on the other side usually two by two is a good is a good uh working area okay yeah you're not trying to do the whole panel no, at once no, it'll, yeah. you, you know no you don't want to do that you have too much product involved and uh by the time you get that done the, the pad will heat up okay all right, when you see this machine, uh, this is a three millimeter throw uh, pad uh, right now. No pad on it. But you can see the movement of it. It almost like a, looks like a solid circle. You can see some oscillation on it. Right. That's a three millimeter. So here's a 12 millimeter. I'll take the pad off. Oh yeah, look at it go. Yeah, you can really see the difference in the movement. Oh yeah. So this one's throwing 12 millimeters back and forth, but that one's only throwing three. Okay. So this is gonna take more off faster. Okay. But you might have to, if this is a bigger machine, because even the bigger machines come in six, nine, 12, 15, 21, I think is the largest wow. one. So it'll take a lot of material off, 
but you might have to come back with a finer one to get that, you know, to get it smoother, to get it more glossy. So you can see we got that, that rub mark that was here. Oh yeah. It's gone. Totally gone, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, that's impressive. So now That's we're going great. to follow up what we've been doing with the uh, with the regular machine, the uh, 3401, okay. with the 8 millimeter throw and the finer compound, and do this whole side again. Gotcha. But like I said, our our goal with this, or was kind of a one step, you know, the whole you know, the orange pad with that thing, with the with the uh, medium polish gets a good decent cut and a really good finish. What we just did is a two-step. Okay. So you do a, more of a compound first, followed by a polish. All so right. So it's just, I mean, you can say you're doubling your time. If we had to do that to the whole car, Oof. just doing it twice. Sure. And, you know, time is money, so they say. And don't, don't yell at your detailer if you tell you you need a two-step. <laughs> it's going to cost you double. <laughs> Surface prep. Surface prep, and you're using what? I said, well, it's an isopropyl alcohol. This one's McGuire's 1801. Oh, they actually have their own. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I do have some of the Onyx coating one, but I'm almost out. So, I mean, this is hey. basically the same thing. Okay. And this step is getting what little, or what remaining residue is on the yeah, paint? Yeah, any of the polish that's still on there, it's, it's getting off now. Okay. You want a nice clean surface. I do this not only um, after polishing, but before you apply a wax. Okay. Yeah, you can do this before any last step project. Okay. So if you're gonna wash your car and say put a, you know, a sealant on it, you know, or something, you gotta do it. Do a surface prep and get all the stuff. Out. So whatever you have is your last step project. Now the alcohol is safe for most surfaces. Yes, this is a diluted alcohol. Okay. Now you can make your own uh, surface prep, um, but they recommend that you, whatever ratio you use, it's 15% uh, alcohol to 70% water. Okay. Um, distilled water. Oh, distilled water. Yeah, yeah okay. you don't want to use pure alcohol. Oh, that's, that's not good. No. But this is a, like I said, this is made for paint. Okay. So that's what I use. Okay, so we're setting up. We're setting up the coating, and then you got to use an applicator to put it on. There's several different types of applicators, uh, foam ones like this, and you have microfiber ones like this. Okay, and inside this, uh, the microfiber is a plastic wrap. Okay. So the coating doesn't sink into the foam. All right. It stays on top. All right. Now I, I prefer these smooth better because this tends to leave some bubbles. And this is microfiber. What's this? It's like a suede. It's a suede. Micro suede. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, micro suede. So All right. you, I've used these. I've used both successfully. Right. You, it's okay to have some bubbles in there. Sure. You're gonna level it. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna coat it. You're gonna wait a minute, and you're gonna level it. And check for high spots and then you know give another buff and then you're good to go okay move on. all right we're going to do some onyx ceramic coating uh on the charger right now all right get some drops going we're going to do half the chunk first so a little goes a long way when it comes to ceramic yes, coating. Yes, a little goes a long way. You can still see it's on. It's going on. I'm gonna do a couple passes. I'm okay. Put a few more drops on. Since this is the initial uh, initial sprinkle on here, and put a little more on just. To... And what's it look like when you flat when it flashes? Well, this one might have tiny bubbles. Looks okay. like tiny bubbles. Uh, some ceramic coatings seem to oil. 
Okay. Well, it looks like, uh, you know, like an oil slick? It right. like that. Okay. We'll, we'll use a two towel um, method to, uh, to level it, one to level it, and then the second one to kind of buff it. And then we'll use the uh, lights to um, Double check, check for high spots. So you, right. can, you can see here the bubbling. If you can, on the stripe, Okay. Can you see the tiny bubbles right there? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's it flashing. So you're just leveling it out, and you're not you're not pressing hard. You're not buffing it. You're, okay. You're just kind of smoothing it out. Right now. So put that down. And we'll go for the second white. Now you have to be careful of areas outside where he did. So if I took the sponge and accidentally hit. Right okay. here, you got to get that up because that's gonna that's gonna leave a high spot. Okay. So wherever you put the put the coating, this, the coating is gonna be on there. Now we're gonna take this light and right. look for high spots, which kind of look like smudges. Right, look at the sharpness of the reflection. That really is impressive. So it looks like there's a slight high spot right here that's kind of in there so what i'm going to do is reactivate it oh the okay i'm going to go put a little more on there reactivate it level it off right away for the second one and there we go it's gone okay so on that first pass we saw that it flashed pretty quick. Right. So right now we're not going to wait. We're going to go right into leveling. We're just kind of okay. Kind of it. So we're going to go right into leveling, and I can already see it's flashing. Okay. And that is it. That is ceramic coating. That's why you only do a section at a time. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like I said this coating is pretty forgiving, uh, but you still want to—you don't want to go too large of it. I wouldn't do this whole trunk at one time. You know, you know. We use the the Onyx uh, ceramic coating, the quartz one. Uh, this is a three-year coating. Okay. Uh, now after the application, uh, wait 30 minutes before driving. That's pretty fast. <laughs> All right. I, yeah. We're not going to do that. Uh, wait at least eight hours before getting it wet and seven days before washing. Okay. We're going to let this sit after we completely do it uh, 12 to 24 hours before we even take it outside. Right. And then uh, we're going to drive it back to Tennessee. Holy cow, look at that. This thing is absolutely lighting off. It was an awesome drive. Oh yeah, it stayed clean at least. It did stay clean. Yeah. All right, Rob, seriously, this is the nicest the car has ever looked. I can't believe the clarity of the reflection in it. You've taken out scratches and hazing that I thought were permanent. We did the regular wash, uh, the foam wash, after your drive in the rain all the way. We took the leaves out, yes. all the dirt. <laughs> I, made you, I made you earn it, I'm sorry. And then you notice when we washed the car, uh, we brought it in the shop, we did a mechanical decon, which is a clay bar. Okay. We played the whole thing. We played the glass, we played the bumpers, we played the paint. And that clay extracts all of those contaminants yes. out of the surface. Yes. And you did even the, even the bumpers with the clay bar. Yes. And which was notice, really impressive. And you notice how the dirt came right off. And then we started on the uh, the polish. We did a one step, which means I used a medium polish. I used uh, an orange uh, Lake Country pad for what we wanted to do to get most of the swirls and scratches out. That worked. Now it's not perfect paint right now. No. But it's your you drive it. Right. You drive it. You know all the time. You know, so we got almost all the hazing out of the stripe. On the spots that were a little rough, like the spot on the roof. Yeah. Remember that spot and the spot over here on the side where it was rubbed? You yes. said there was a tarp that was rubbing on it. Uh-huh. Uh, I used a, uh, a Eurofiber pad on a small three-inch uh, polisher and with a little bit of uh, harsher compound or okay. a little bit heavier compound to get that spot out. And then I went over, over that with the... Uh, with the regular polish, the, okay. the just car medium and 
it, it, it worked out great. It, it came out really nice. Uh, I polished the glass also. Polished the uh, the bumpers a little bit. Put some mother's uh, protectant on there. Once over with on the on the wheels with the mother's aluminum polish okay. I, by hand. You took on this giant task really to help us with paint correction. Right. And and show us that a thirty five hundred dollar paint job could look it can, it can, like a ten or fifteen thousand dollar paint job. I said it got ceramic coated with a um, a good three year coating onyx coating. Yeah. Uh, onyx quartz to be exact. And. Uh, it looks like I said. It looks. It looks great. You it looks amazing. I, I, you should see it on the looks I was getting when I was ah! driving here. So I touched towed it from Athens, Alabama. That's where my business is. Athens, yes. Alabama, Detail Rescue. Uh, I move into my new shop the first of the month, the first of December. That's awesome. I'm so, excited. So I'll do a couple weeks of renovations in there and probably be open for a real business uh, beginning of the year. Beginning of the year. Beginning of the well, year. Rob, thanks again. Uh, one last shout out, let everyone know the name of the company and where they can find you. Detail Rescue out of Athens, Alabama. Uh, my email is detailrescue911 at uh, gmail.com. And I'm also on Facebook at Detail Rescue. Great, great. All right. Well, thank you again, Rob. This is fantastic. I'm really excited. Yeah.